welcome to the No Fear Sock Knitting class. My name is Denise, also known as Earth Tones Girl, and this is a bonus class. In today's class, we are going to talk about how to knit with self-striping sock yarn to get perfectly matched stripes for your socks. I am so excited to talk to you about this today. Um, I get that I get asked that question quite a bit. How do I get the stripes in my socks to match so perfectly? So we are going to cover that in today's class. So sit back, get ready. It's really, really simple. That's why I'm so excited to share it with you. It's a really, really simple thing to do. You just have to make a little mental note or just write down just one little note in your on your pattern if you're using a pattern or even on the ball band just to keep track of what you're doing so that your stripes will match up. So let's talk about self-striping sock yarn first. Now it comes in many forms. You can have a skein, which is what I have up here. You can have a skein um, that comes with, usually skeins are 100 grams. So you can have a skein that comes with two perfectly matched 50 gram skeins. And I'll talk about that. There's a company that does that. There are a few, but my favorite I will talk about in one minute. You can also have a skein that is just a continuation of the pattern repeat. And I will talk about how to find your way in that. You can also have, um, instead of, of a skein, you can have a ball. So you can have two smaller balls, maybe 50 gram balls that you can use. And then there is also, um, it's something called a gobstopper. I just love saying that word. Um, and I will I will link to every yarn that I talk about today. I'm going to link in the description box for you down below so you will be able to find them. Um, but you have a gobstopper and that is a ball, a big ball of, again, self-striping yarn. So I'm going to explain how you match up perfectly so that your stripes and your socks match. So let's talk about now, do I have a favorite self-striping sock yarn? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I have a couple of favorites. Um, I want to say, yeah, I have a couple of favorites. And and I think it kind of depends on what I'm in the mood to knit because, yeah, I see it peeking up right there, um, because the yarn bases are all really different. And yes, they're self-striping, but they're all kind of dyed I don't know that much about the dyeing process, but I've seen just in, some of them have a little jog in the, and a jog means like you can see where one color changes to the other color, but a lot of them you can't see it. It's seamless and it's so beautiful. So we're going to talk about hand dyed self-striping and commercially dyed self-striping. So first up, um, I have two main favorites. Uh, this is one. And this is mustache yarn. Um, the dyer behind this, Stacy, is amazing. Um, it is one of my favorites because the striping, the repeats of the color, and she can do, I mean, you can have a repeat in a color that's four stripes. So you get four stripes of color and those stripes can be different, can be varying widths. So you can have one stripe be seven rounds or it can be eight rounds it can be four rounds it can be as much as 10 rounds it's really up to the dyer uh the average i think for this one may be i don't know it kind of varies really from colorway to colorway but on i think on the average she's about six to eight um rounds per color in her stripes <clears throat> and she usually has very long pattern repeats so you can get anywhere from maybe eight different colors and I've also seen her do as many as like 15 to 20. I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> uh, so what she does with her yarn is she provides, if you can see here, she provides two. Now this series is called her must match set. So she sends you two balls, 50 grams each. And so that way you have one for each sock. It is really easy to match when you've got two balls matching like this. Really easy to match your stripes when you've got two balls matching. Now, what do you do when you've got something like this? Now, this is another huge favorite of mine. This is definitely in my top five, hands down. And this is the Cozy Knitter. Um, her name is Christina and she is based in Canada. I love this yarn. In 2018, just a little side note, in 2018, I think I knit about four or five pairs of socks just with her yarn at the start of the year. It was just one pair after the other. She has incredible, 
incredible colorways and there's something about her colors that yes they are distinct stripes but there's also something with the way they blend into each other you definitely you don't see any jogs in the color the colors all sort of play so well together um coexist so well i don't know what word you want to use but they're just gorgeous i love her yarn so much and this particular colorway she has this colorway is called crocus um, which is a spring colorway that she has and her yarn is this base is called her bliss base so this is an 80 20 base 80 percent merino and 20 percent nylon um this particular base this is a 75 25 base so 75 merino 25 nylon this is a little plumper this is a little finer i love them both it just depends on what colors i i main, mainly go for these yarns based on their color not even so much for the the um percentages in the yarn does that make sense so those are hand dyed another so here is another hand dyed that is another top five for me is um scrumptious pearl and this is a gobstopper you guys look at that this is a hand wound ball Oh my gosh, can we just look at the beauty of this for a moment? This particular colorway, because I know you're sitting there saying, oh my God, what is that colorway? Is called Peachy Punch, and this is her Stripe Me Up um, sock set. So this is her Stripe Me Up sock yarn, and this is an 80-20 also. Uh, now, what would you do with something like this or something like this, where you only have, now this is just a mini for contrasting cuffs, heels, and toes, but what do you do when you've got these? Talk about that too. Now, you also have commercially dyed sock yarn, and this is a very, very popular one by Knit Picks called Felici. Again, I will link to everything down below. This is called Felici. The stripes on this, as you can see, just from looking at this, the stripes on this are a little bit wider. Love this yarn too. There's something about it. This blend is also a 75-25. The bases are also different because this yarn does not feel like this, even though this is also a 75-25. I highly strongly recommend as much yarn as you can play with and you have an opportunity to play with, play around and enjoy because the yarns feel so different. The socks that they produce are just amazing. There's something about Felici that is just butter soft if you ask anyone that has ever knit with this yarn it is really amazing so this is a commercially dyed yarn now one thing if i had anything negative to say and it's not negative that's the wrong word but um maybe a critique is that it's a little easier to see the change in color with this particular yarn does it bother me absolutely not sometimes it just aesthetically it actually looks really pretty um because you almost get like a line of um Oh dear, what is the word? I can't think of the word. If I think of it, I'll put it on the screen here for you, but um, oh my gosh, what is the word? It's gonna drive me crazy. Demarcation, yes, that's it. It's a line of demarcation where you can see the difference in the color and it, it's almost like a faded line, but I love it because it just, it almost adds another stripe. So this is another option for you. And one, I think of my favorite commercially dyed yarn is Opal. This stuff. This is workhorse yarn, guys. Workhorse yarn, you guys. Is it the softest? Not necessarily. Does it have the, some of the most incredible colorways I've ever seen? Yes. But this does not stripe the way something like this stripes. It's not distinct striping. This almost looks, let me see if I can show you. This looks where you'll, this has more of a fair isle color work look to it that's it it looks like color work in a sock without all of the work of the color work <laughs> so um you can dazzle all of your friends by using this yarn and they'll think you're an absolute genius <laughs> so we have this yarn where you'll get a block of one color see the green and you can see like right in here and then you'll see in here this is going to create an actual pattern in the yarn so again i, I really don't think you can see from the ball band but you get stripes, then you'll get what looks like two or three colors and then a change. And then two colors, three colors, two colors, three colors. And it's just the way that it is dyed. This is commercially dyed. Again, a complete mystery how this is done, but it's absolutely beautiful. Um, opal, um, commercially dyed yarn tends to be a little less expensive than 
hand dyed yarn both are amazing it, it's within your budget it depends on what is what you can afford to purchase um so yeah that said so let's get down to um showing you what i do now i did a another class uh two at a time socks that is class no fear sock knitting class number seven knitting socks two at a time in that class i cover how to divide your the ball into how to divide one ball into two that is what you would have to do with this do you have to rewind this no definitely not would you want to rewind this no because it's just so beautiful to knit this way um when you are knitting with a single the best thing for you to do now a single means you only have one ball once you wind this up you only have one ball to work with what i usually do in a case like that is I will measure off exactly how much yarn and I will start, I will hold the tip in my finger, the tip of the yarn, and I will go to my elbow or to my shoulder. It really doesn't matter. Usually if I go to my shoulder, that for me is enough for 64 stitches to cast on. 9.99 times out of 10, that is all I need. I might need a click more no problem. So what you want to do then, if you're working with a single ball or a single cake, what you want to do is just measure out your yarn, put a little slip knot in or I or just mark your spot and cast on from there. Remember where, what you've done. Remember exactly how you measured it off. And then you are going to do that for the second ball. For something like this, I'm actually going to put this on the winder right now and give you a little bit more of a specific um, tutorial on how I use yarn like this. So be right back. Okay guys, so I wanted you to see what this looks like when I open it up. Oh, and I didn't mention before, again, it's mustache yarn and this particular colorway is I Am Fearless. Love this colorway. So I will take my ball band off and when you open this up, okay, you've got all of this absolute beautiful gorgeousness. And what you will see here is you have two perfectly matched skeins. Look at that. There we go, ready to go. Now, I will put these on my ball winder one at a time. Sorry, my children are yelling in the background there. <laughs> This is recording with kids at home, you guys, so bear with me. Uh, whoops, let's move this over. Okay, and what I will do is just cut these bands. Okay, get rid of these. Pop these off. Whoops, here it is. Okay. Okay, now here's where the color actually starts so it starts right here so I will find the other area that is knotted which is right here separate that okay and I am now ready to start now this particular color as you can see let me move this a little closer to the camera okay I don't know if you can see here but this is a light color here almost like a light like a periwinkle blue and then it starts to change to this purple color. There you go, there. You can see it a little better like this, okay? So it's starting here with the periwinkle and then it moves into this purple color. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I start, when I'm ready to wind the second ball, I'm going to start them in the exact same place, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like at the end. This is just a side note, you guys. When I wind my cakes, I always wind them twice. This is what they look like when you wind it the first time. It is really, really dense, it's really hard, and what happens when it stays, a lot of people tell you don't leave your yarn caked for too long because the yarn is on the stretch, okay? It's being pulled because it there's a lot of tension from the winder 
uh, from the Swift, I'm sorry, onto the winder. So what it does is it pulls on the yarn a little bit and it's pulling on the natural elasticity of the yarn. So what I do is I wind my balls twice. I wind the cakes twice. Wind it once like this, then I will wind it again on the ball winder one more time and it comes out looking a lot softer it's fluffier the yarn is much more relaxed and it can stay in the cake a lot longer just a little something that i do so there you saw how i wound my balls my the the two skeins of yarn into two cakes and then I wound them again and that again is just regarding the tension in the yarn because um, sometimes you're working on your socks and you may work on them for a little while and then you put them down and leaving them in the bag for a while you definitely don't want to ruin the elasticity in the yarn leaving it in such a tight cake so there you go now how do I get these to match here's the simple part now I've got my two cakes wound I'm ready to go Actually, that looks terrible on the bottom. Let's go like this. <laughs> Let's do that instead. So what I will do now, these are starting, as I showed you before, you have this really light purple, then it starts to go into a slightly darker purple. Let me see if I can, yeah, if you can see the difference right in there, probably not so much. Okay, doesn't matter. Now, this is a rainbow skein. So it's got your classic red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, uh, with a couple of extra stripes in there with varying shades of those colors. But I don't want to start. Can I start right here? Absolutely. For me, I don't want to start there. I want it to look like a true rainbow in my sock. So I am just going to wind this, just pull this off and then voila, here's where it changes to the new color right here. That's where the line of de that demarcation, and it's not a distinct line in this yarn, it's just how beautifully dyed it is. But here's another, here's where the change happens. So what I will do at this point, right at the change, I'm not even going to bother to, um, I'm not even going to bother with measuring in this case, because I have a distinct point where I'm going to start, okay? What I'm going to do here is do the same thing with the other skein. So I'm going to take this end, here's the other end, so I'm just going to hold on to that. Here's the other end and I'm going to do the same thing. Just pull this off till I get to the red. There is my line. And I'm going to try to match these up as best I can. Honestly, right there. Can you guys see that? Right there, right at that intersection is where I'm going to put my slip knot. Now, um, actually, no, I'm sorry, I apologize. From here, because if I put my slip knot there, I would get part of the stitches would be purple and the loop would be red. Definitely don't wanna do that. So what I'm going to do from here now is measure off. So I apologize for that. I'm going to measure off from here. And I'm going to do, I'm holding this. I've got the two strands coming from the ball and I'm holding this out to my shoulder and I know that is about enough. Can you guys see my hands? That is enough for me to use for 64 stitches. Now, what do I do with all this extra? It's not that much that you're, you're breaking off. You can save scraps like that to use in scrappy socks. You definitely don't want to throw it away because it will come in handy. You can make what's called a magic knot ball which is really is magic. I will link to that below. It's a way of tying skeins together, tying scraps and ends like this together via a knot, but the, the knot doesn't come apart. I, I, I don't understand how it works, but it's really amazing. So anyway, got these held together. Okay, now I'm holding on to here. I can let go of this, holding on right here. What I'm going to do is separate these two and I'm going to make slip knots in the same spot. So I'm just making right here, just a simple slip knot Okay, in one, okay, hold on, <laughs> making a really simple slip knot. So there's one and I'm not letting go. I'm gonna do that in the same place. Now you may be off by, I don't know, a couple of centimeters, but then again, maybe not. <laughs> Haven't moved my hands. 
spot, found a spot and I made my little slip knot. Okay. I'm going to show you the slip knot again. So here we go. I am there. And, and that is where right at that slip knot is where I'm going to put my needle. Now what I'm going to do is make the slip knot a little bigger in the skein that I'm not using right away. If you're doing these, oops, I've almost lost my skein right here. Here we go. Just need to pull that out. Okay, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha, got it. Okay, just gonna give that a little extra pull just to make the loop a little bit bigger. Keeps turning on me. Okay, got it. Okay, so I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna leave those loops in place. So now I'm going to wind this very gently so I don't pull on the knot. I'm going to wind that very gently. And that's where my slip knot is, right there in the skein, right on the cake. And I'm gonna leave it there. If you're doing your socks one at a time, just leave it there. Okay, and then wind off, just wind the rest of it back on. Okay, and also don't break the excess that you're not going to use. Don't break that off until you're absolutely done with your cast on. Just in case, just leave it there. You definitely don't want such a long tail so you can pop that off. Just cut that when you're done. And now with my other one, I'm going to find my slip knot. Here it is. This is what I'm going to put over my needle and I'm going to start my knitting. That simple guys, that is how I get my self-striping socks to match with putting the slip knot in the exact same place in both. If you're knitting them two at a time, you can A, refer to my other video. <laughs> uh, and if you're knitting them two at a time, then you don't have to worry about the other knot coming out. I've secured that knot a couple of times in there and I'm just gonna put this in my project bag. That knot is not gonna come out, the slip knot, it's just gonna stay in place until you're ready. Again, if you're knitting them two at a time, then you're good to go, okay? You can just follow the instructions or just cast on for your two at a time and you're ready. Now, when you've got, that's with two balls. Now, here is a single cake. Now, this is also um, the Cozy Knitter. This is her Gingerbread House colorway. Um, it's a holiday colorway. So I don't think this is available in her shop. I'm, I'm almost sure it's not available in her shop now, but this is a um, recurring colorway that she will bring up at a, around holiday time. So now what do I do with this? I've only got one ball. I decided not to take the time to wind it into two because you don't always have to. I'm going to find the end. Whoops, hold on. Find my end. Okay, and with this case now, this is just me being a little obsessive compulsive. Um, I really do like my stripes to match. So what I'm going to do here is the same thing. I'm going to measure out, okay, and give myself maybe a little bit more. But I'm going to measure this, you guys. I'm going to actually measure this with a tape measure or ruler. Um, I have a cutting mat here uh, right next to me that actually has uh, measurements on it. So I'm just gonna measure this out. And let's say this is, I don't know, maybe 24 inches i'm gonna know i'm going to start when i'm ready to start the second sock i'm going to start by measuring off 24 inches in the green stripe put my slip knot in and start knitting that is really all you do super duper simple okay that's all you have to do there when you have one ball now when you have a gobstopper which i have here this is um I realize I only ever made one sock out of this. <laughs> so when you have a gobstopper, you're going to do the same thing, exactly the same thing. You're going to measure off. Cause I, again, I really love keeping it this way. It just looks really beautiful, whether you have it in a yarn bowl or you have it in a, um, your yarn bag kind of turned down. It's just a little conversation piece. It's beautiful just to look at. So I personally would not rewind this into two balls. That's just my choice, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to measure off however many, how much. Now, if you see where I am in this skein, here's a green, the green color and the white is about to start right here. Now you've got a couple of choices. You can start right at the join because you've got a long enough tail. You can start with your cast on right here. What will happen is the absolute edge of the cast on will be green and the loops on the needle will be white because I'm going to drape this over 
and do a long tail cast on like this. Okay, so this is going to be the bottom of the stripe. This, the white are going to be the loops. That's just, another, again, it's aesthetics. It's just another little accent or little thing you can do with your socks. If you want a complete stripe, you're gonna do the same thing. Start right at the change in the color, measure off your amount, you know this is it. Put your slip knot in, and I'll show you the slip knot again. You're just making a loop, just a little loop like this. You are going to let that hang, reach through, pull this through, and there is your slip knot. When you tighten it up, okay, and you pull on the tail, you can tighten or lengthen the knot. Okay, that is what you're going to put on your needle. You're ready to start. Now, what do you do with this? <laughs> and this can also apply to the other commercially dyed with the Felici, same thing. What do you do with this? This is a little bit more interesting. I'm going to pop the label off, find the end, which is always very strategically buried. Okay, hang on, let's see if we can find it. I'm gently pulling, how irritating. <laughs> don't see where it is guys okay you know what I really don't want to take this whole thing apart but I don't know why I can't find the end it's usually tucked in okay you don't need to see me fighting with a ball here maybe it's the white no okay I can't find it but anyway same thing what you have to do with something like this is just pay a little bit more attention I try to start in a more solid color so if that means that you again have to wind off a little bit to get to a sol more solid stripe in the yarn to me it's worth it if you want your socks to match there is a beauty though to not having your stripes match some people like to knit um so they start with the rainbow for example in the other yarn they'll start with the rainbow in the traditional red orange yellow from the top down and then with the other one they'll start with the purple stripe that way they're going in the opposite direction Mm -hmm. It's all aesthetics. It's whatever's pleasing to you. Um, it's kind of irritating me right now that I cannot find the end of this. So I'm going to keep digging <laughs> until I find it because I don't know why I can't find it. Maybe it's this strand. No, no. And it's, it's also wound. So it's kind of intersecting with each other here and cannot find the end. Oh my goodness. It is a complete mystery. I'm, I'm tugging away here now. Now it's personal. <laughs> okay, I will make a note at the end whether I found the end of this, but that is definitely what you want to do. Here's, okay, here's an example too of just a, sol a more solid stripe. Just make a note of where you are starting in the ball. It's, it's that simple. <sighs> Let me check my notes. I think I told you everything I wanted to share. That is how you use self-striping yarn to create perfectly matched striping socks. <laughs> I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the description box down below. I will be happy to answer. Um, this tutorial was a little bit different because I wasn't actually knitting anything today. Um, it was just really demoing how to wind your ball um, and the slip knot and how to measure off with your, um, with your yarn so that you know you can start in the same place. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, I hope you found this helpful. I will link to all of the yarn that I mentioned in the description box down below, and I will see you for the next class very soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.